Hello and welcome to another edition of Puddle Glum's Music Collection. Today we're talking about Res Band or Resurrection Band, their top 10 albums, according to me, but they can change at different times, uh, depending on how I feel. But if you have your favorite top 10, go down to the bottom and let me know them in the comments. Let me know what your favorite Res Band album is. Uh, but I'm not including live albums like Res Band Live Bootleg or Res Band 20 Years. I'm not including the box set and I'm not including Appendectomy because those th songs uh, were already done and they were just unplugged. So I'm not uh, including those or any compilations. Uh, so that was Res Band Bootleg. My number 10 is Hostage. Uh, over time, this uh, hasn't held up great, but there are a lot of great tunes on here like Tears in the Rain. Uh, you know, Crimes. Crimes are on MTV quite a bit back in the day. This is when Rez were going more new wave like a lot of bands did back in the day. You know, Rush were a little heavier and then they went the new wave. And uh, Rez band also followed suit with a lot of new wave tunes on here. But there are a lot of heavier tunes on here too. Uh, so Defective Youth is a little bit of a punk feel. Um, attention was pretty heavy. But then you had a lot of new wave stuff on here like SOS. <laughs> <laughs> it's a pretty good album though. I think it was a big seller for uh, Sparrow from what I heard. Next is DMZ. Uh, Resurrection Man DMZ. Uh, on the back here, it's the first time I've ever seen Res Band printed. Um, so on the back it says Res Band somewhere, but uh, they're always known as Resurrection Band. For a while, then they change a res band, then they change a res. But uh, DMZ, I always thought wasn't a coerce album. Uh, I thought it, it switched back and forth from a little of the new wave time period stuff to more of the heavy stuff. Uh, this has songs like Military Man on it, uh, Babylon, White Noise, which was uh, borrowed a little bit from Van Halen, I believe. But, uh, you know, as I gotten older, this album seems a little more put together. Uh, seems like it's more co cohesive now that I've gotten older. I'm not even sure that's a word, cohesive. Anyway, but it seems like it goes flows together better now that I'm older. So I don't know why. Probably because I have different uh, influence of music there. Um, so that's number nine. Number eight. This is the second one that was released on Sparrow Records. I think this was 85. Uh, Between Heaven and Hell, they tried to get back to more of their rock and roll roots. They still had a little bit of that new wave on it. But they had uh, songs like Shadows, which were very popular. Love Comes Down, which was on MTV a lot of the time. Uh, sounds a little bit like ACDC's whole, ACDC's whole lot of Rosie. Uh, but this is uh, Res Band Between Heaven and Hell. Shadows is a great song on here. I think you know 2000, a lot of great songs on here, the main event. And that's Res Band, Between Heaven and Hell. Next up was their debut album, Waiting to Reply, on the scene in 78. Uh, nothing like it in the Christian music market, um, because Christians shouldn't, you know, at the time shouldn't mess with rock and roll, but Resurrection Man was doing it. Uh, anything before this, I think that was as heavy, may have been Petra, Come and Join Us, or maybe Agape, some other things, you know. I mean, you always had Larry Norman and things around at this time. Things are really changing, but this, I think, was the first thing on the market that uh, had the heaviness, along with, uh, you know, the production qualities, even though it wasn't produced great. It was uh, money that was donated. Res Band produced it. They did the cover work. They did the artwork. They did everything. And Star Song just took it. And uh, it did pretty good. Because there's nothing like it at the time in the Christian music marketplace. So, it's their debut album. Up next is uh, Mama Don't Love Daddy Anymore. This really had a big influence on my life as a teenager. Because, you know, I'd gone through a divorce. The story was almost just like my story in the song, so it really spoke to me. You have Elevator Music on here, which was a little bit more of a punky type song. Uh, Alienated, Stark Spare. Uh, you had songs like The Chair, which were really good. And Rez started talking more and more about 
uh, Christians getting involved in social issues, helping people, uh, things like that. So they, as they went on, they went more and more into issues that dealt with uh, struggles. I never heard of a band dealing with divorce before, so I thought, wow, you know, no Christian music out there is dealing with things like divorce, uh, people having to deal with handicaps and things like that. It was, it was pretty amazing for the market at the time. Um, uh, Rick Vaughn that's posted here in the picture, he since has uh, passed on, RIP to him. And so this is Resurrection Band, Mama Don't Love Danny anymore. Uh, the next one I have up here, Silent Screams. They had taken a uh, time off between, between Heaven and Hell on Sparrow Records in like 85, 86. And they'd uh, taken some time off and then they came back, I think this is 88 or 89. Um, and they came back with this album, new bass player. Jim Denton had gone to seminary and uh, you know he was doing other things and then eventually became a pastor. I think he's retired now. Um, so Roy Montroy stepped in. Roy Montroy had already done songs like on DMZ. He, he wrote White Noise. He'd already written some songs for Res Band. And he, he was always around Res Band. If you look on the first album on Awaiting Your Reply, you will see him in the pictures in the subways. Uh, that's Roy Montroy holding the boombox. So he was always involved with Res Band. And then he became the bass player on Silent Screams. Going back more to their blues, hard rock uh, roots, they did a a cover of uh, Blind Faith's Presence of the Lord on this one. Uh, great songs on here. Rain Dance, Light Light, Silent Screams, which is one of their heavier songs. Um, so they came back to a lot of their roots. Uh, not a lot of that new wave on here. They just came back to the heaviness of Roy Montre now playing bass on the album. Next one here is Rainbow Zen. This is their sophomore effort. Rainbow Zen I always loved because of the song selection. I thought they did really great songs in here. They still had a little bit of that Led Zeppelin influence, but they also had, uh, I felt like a little bit of a Sabbath influence on here, uh, as well as like an Ozzy Sabbath influence, especially on Rainbow Zen, Midnight Sun. Uh, they had the song Africans on here. Africans was like the first song I ever known of against apartheid. I believe Wikipedia states this was the first recorded song in the United States against apartheid. Uh, this is a year before Peter Gabriel's uh, song against apartheid. So this is a, this is 1979. Cool cutout. Uh, you could have the glass on there for it, or you could have the clouds and the cutout. It's kind of cool. Then you can put it back in. I have the original uh, one with the original star song. I get it out of here. Star song label. Then I have the one with the colored label. When you get these albums, a lot of times it's cut up here, so you got to be careful when you if you can find any. Uh, so many of them are are cut up there in the die cut. So there you go. And this is the one with uh, the other label. It's the other one with the other star song label. So. And we're down to three, so number three, Lament. I actually worked on this album. This is a great time in the studio. Ty Tabor produced this from King's X, new producer. Uh, everybody was very excited to have Ty, Ty Tabor in there producing. Uh, Ty brought in a lot of new ideas for the band. Uh, Stu Heiss was uh, very excited about having a new producer. I felt like there. And... Uh, a lot of cool things happen on this album. And this is their first concept album. So this is a story album. And uh, has a lot of good memories. And it's a very good album for Riz Band. I think it's one of their best. Kind of their swan song album. One of their last ones. After this, they just did Ampidectomy, which was uh, unplugged of just a lot of their other songs. So it was kind of a best of unplugged. But this is uh, their last album, really, with all new material. And then number two, coming in with uh, Innocent Blood. Uh, this was only released on vinyl in Europe. And uh, this cover is quite blurry. If you get the uh, CD, the cover is much more clear. 
Uh, this little girl lived next door to where the band lived in their church. Um, and uh, she was abducted and never seen again to this day. Uh, if you go on Facebook, there's a page remembering her and any information about her. But this is, uh, this was uh, way back when this happened. And uh, it's kind of a sad story. So this is Res, isn't it? Some Blood. I would call this one of their more metal albums. Um, a lot of the songs here are a lot heavier. and uh, But there's still a lot of blues influence on here. And this was on their own label, Gur Records, along with Lamette. <clears throat> this is my favorite one, number one. This is usually my favorite one, but sometimes it switches places with different things. <laughs> This is uh, Colors on Light Records, their first album on Light Records. Everybody was like blown away. It's so much heavier than their other two albums that came out. A lot more of like an ACDC influence on here, as well as uh, some other influences, but it really had good production for the time. It was like, wow, finally Resurrection Band was really good production, you know. Chicago Recording Company on Light Records. This has been reissued a number of times on CD. But this is the only record we've ever had out. They've never reissued it on vinyl before. And they really talked a lot about uh, different issues on here of the city. You know, struggles, being a Christian, struggles of living in the city. Just uh, internal struggles. So it's a really good album. American Dreams on here, The Struggle. Autograph, New York City. Hidden Man, Benny and Sue. City Streets. Uh, they really felt like they come into their own style here, even though they did borrow from a few things. But uh, really, this is probably, this is the only uh, Resurrection Man album with no keyboards on it, just so you know. So there you go. Those are my top ten. If you have a different idea of a different album you like, perhaps you like a completely different album I didn't even mention, just put it in the comments. Those are just my top ten. I like every Resurrection Man album pretty much. But uh, <laughs> So uh, see you later. Thanks for joining me. We'll see you next show. Bye.